What's up, YouTubers? My name is Brett. I'm an English teacher here in South Korea. I have a passion for Korean history, specifically the Korean War. And many countries did great things in the Korean War to help keep Korea free. And specifically, I'm going to talk today about the country of New Zealand and the great things they did. Why? Because not intentionally, but the U.S. government overlooked their accomplishments and did not award them citations. They didn't overlook them completely at all because they protect New Zealand to this day because of the ANZ U.S. Treaty in 1951. And honestly, that's the main reason New Zealand sent soldiers to the Korean Wars because they wanted to build strong ties with the United States and they wanted the U.S. to protect them. And the U.S. does a good job of that. I love my country. I miss my home country. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not doing this to bash America. I'm doing this to remember the brave New Zealand soldiers and to keep their memory alive. And if people didn't know about their accomplishments or they don't know about them, I hope to change that. And I honestly believe I will change that. Okay. All right, the New Zealand, New Zealand military sent two branches to the Korean War, the Navy and the Army. We'll talk about the Navy first. There are 1,350 New Zealand sailors that fought in the Korean War. The two main frigates that came were the Tutira and the Pukaki. Okay, the Tutira and the Pukaki, they did a lot of troop escort missions. They allowed American troop ships to land safely in Korea when they were coming from Japan to Korea. Okay, that's the first thing they did. Okay, they also they arrived on July 3rd, 1950. That's when they arrived to Korea. Okay, and they also fought in the Battle of Incheon. Incheon was the turning point, the turning point of the Korean War, and North Korea was winning the Korean War. They were winning battle after battle after battle, and almost drove the South Korean and the U.S. forces away from, away from the Korean Peninsula. But the Battle of Incheon changed that, and the battle was led by the Americans, and it was General MacArthur's idea. He was the commander of all the U.N. forces in Korea at first. But the New Zealand Navy participated in the Battle of Inchon as well. One New Zealand sailor was killed in the Battle of Inchon, and there were okay, and they bombarded a lot of North Korean positions, North Korean defenses in Inchon. They did a lot of shore bombardment. The Jeteran Pukaki were the two frigates in Inchon, and they did a lot of shore bombardment, so the U.S. Marines could land safely without being uh, without being killed or meeting much resistance from the enemy North Korean soldiers. Okay. That's what the New Zealand Navy did, okay? We'll talk about what the Army did, okay? The Army sent a thousand-man artillery unit called K-Force. Okay, that was their name, K-Force. That's what people called them. Okay, originally 5,982 people applied for the artillery positions to fight in K-Force, but only a thousand or a little, a little bit over a thousand were accepted, okay? And K-Force did amazing things, particularly at the Battle of Kapyong. The Chinese and North Koreans were trying to retake Seoul from the UN forces, okay? And the Australians and the Canadians were, and the New Zealanders were defending Kapyong. Well, the K Force, the New Zealand artillery, they ha had command of five American artillery units there. Five, there you guys go, five. All right. And they stopped the Chinese invasion. And where they did a really good job was the Chinese soldiers sometimes got as close as my hand is from my cheek right here without touching it. That's how close they got to the Canadian and Australian soldiers. But the New Zealand artillery was so accurate and so precise that they killed the invading Austro the, uh, excuse me, they killed the invading Chinese soldiers, but they did not, repeat, did not kill any of the defending Canadian or Australian defenders. That's how accurate and precise their artillery fire was. Also, during the Korean War, K-Force fired 10,000 rounds of artillery in one day. Uh, one day they did that. No other artillery unit came close in doing that. Okay. And also, at the Battle of Maryong San, their artillery had the same accuracy and the same precision as they did in the Battle of Kapyong. And Australia fought against China in the Battle of Maryong San, and Australia decisively won that battle. And a lot of that was because of the New Zealand artillery. Australia did amazing things as well, not saying that. Canada did amazing, and Australia both did amazing things in the Battle of Kapyong. But New Zealand did amazing things as well. So God bless the, God bless the brave New Zealanders, or you can say Kiwis, God bless the brave Kiwis. So God bless the brave Kiwis. Really happy for their accomplishments, and I'm very proud of them, and I believe we need to keep their memory alive. So God bless the brave Kiwis, and hope, hope you guys are having a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. All right. Hope everybody's doing well, and take care, and God bless, and bye-bye, and God bless these brave, brave New Zealand soldiers. So, take care, God bless, bye-bye, bye-bye.